In this video, we're going to talk about how to find out where a point is located in which quadrant given some restrictions. We're going to go through six examples, see if you can do these on your own and we'll go through them together. So the first one, it says x is equal to 3, but the y value is less than 0. So when we think of the x and y coordinates, right, when the y value is less than 0, that means it's going to be below the x-axis. That means we have to be in the third or fourth quadrant. And x is equal to 3, that means we're going 3 to the right, but y is less than 0, meaning negative. So that's going to put us right here in the fourth quadrant. So I'm just going to use the Roman numeral IV for 4. Remember, the quadrants go in this counterclockwise fashion, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's look at another example, see if you can do this one. Here it just tells us that y has to be greater than 3. So we can think about, okay, if we were to go 1, 2, 3, so y is 3, like actually greater than 3, meaning above this, right? But it doesn't tell us what the x value could be. It could be negative, meaning we're going to the left. x could be positive, meaning we're going to the right. All we know is that we're above 3. So that means we could be in either quadrant 1 or 2. So we've actually got the two quadrants as our answer there. Let's look at number 3. x is less than negative 1. So remember, x controls left and right, the horizontal direction. So if x is less than negative 1, that means to the left of negative 1. There's no restrictions put on the y-coordinate, so that means we could either be going positive up or negative down. So that's going to put us in the second or third quadrant. So again, we get two answers for that one. For number four, we have negative 2x is greater than 0 and y is less than 0. Well, let's solve this one here for x. If we divide both sides by negative 2, what happens to that inequality sign? Well, remember, when you divide by a negative, the inequality sign changes direction. 0 divided by negative 2 is still going to be 0. So x has to be less than 0, so it means we're going to be to the left of the y-axis. And y is less than 0, so y is less than 0, that's negative. We're going to be below the x-axis. That's going to put us in the third quadrant. Let's look at another one. Let's say number 5 here. This one's a little bit more challenging. So x squared times y is less than 0. Now this one's kind of interesting because when you have a negative value squared, a negative times a negative is a positive. If you have a positive value squared, a positive times a positive is also a positive, right? So no matter what, this is going to be positive. So I'm just going to put a plus there for positive. Y though here could be positive or negative. If it's negative, a negative times a positive is a negative, and that's less than zero. If y is positive, a positive times a positive is positive, that's not less than zero. So that means that X could be anything, positive or negative, but y has to be less than zero, meaning negative. So positive times a negative will give us a negative. So let's see, y is less than zero, that's going to be here, and x can we said could be negative or positive. So that's going to be in the third or fourth quadrant. And then the last one, see if you can do this one, 3 times x times y is greater than zero. Let's just go ahead and divide by 3 to get the variables by themselves here. So x times y is greater than 0. Well, remember, greater than 0 just means positive, right? So we could have a x is positive and y is positive. A positive times a positive, that'll be positive, greater than 0. Or x and y can both be negative because a negative times a negative is positive, and that's greater than 0. So where does that occur? Well, you can see a positive times a positive, that's positive. A negative times a negative, that's positive. So it looks like it's going to be in quadrants 1 and 3, and you've got it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more math tutoring videos, check out my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel where I've got hundreds of videos like these from pre-algebra all the way up through pre-calculus, even some calculus videos. I'll see you over in those other videos.